Hey everybody, this is Jen. Welcome to my channel. Today, we're gonna to talk about some winter sewing changes that we're gonna to have to make because our climate is changing. So follow me along right here on Garden Jen's Journey. Alright, so today we're going to be talking about some winter sewing issues. What is winter sewing? Well, in a nutshell, we're going to take containers like these. <laughs> these are a bunch of water and milk uh, gallon jugs. And we take seeds and we put them in soil in the seeds and we set them outside in the winter and then in the springtime as the temperatures start to rise the seeds in those containers germinate when mother nature says hey it's time to wake up and they grow in those jugs until it's time to transplant them into your various garden beds containers pots what have you and generally uh, when you grow your seedlings in containers outside they do much better than if you have to try to start them indoors. And there is a whole playlist that I have and I will link to it above, especially a tutorial on exactly how to winter sew. I've been doing it for over six years. I think this is either my seventh or eighth year of doing it. So I'm quite knowledgeable in what's working and also what is not. We all know that the climate is changing. Um, you see it all around. And you know, you can go with different theories on why the climate is changing. But nevertheless, the fact is our climate is changing. And so we have to change along with it in order to have success, especially when it comes to gardening. Now, when winter sowing was first created years and years ago, uh, us people here in the north where we get snow and freezing temperatures could generally expect to put our containers outside in the winter when it's cold it's a balmy 12 degrees today and the seeds would stay frozen and in hibernation so to speak until the springtime when things started to thaw and warm up well, I don't know if you guys live in the north or if you know what's going on in the north, but uh, our winters have not been stable here in the north, uh, especially here in Michigan. I've noticed it a lot. Uh, we get uh, freezes and thaws on a much more regular, random basis than just staying solidly frozen through the winter, which poses a giant risk if you are doing winter sowing. Um, like I said, right now we're sitting at about 12 degrees. It's beautiful out today. It really is. Um, but we're sitting at 12 degrees. Last week we were sitting at 50 degrees. And, uh, you know, the snow was melting and uh, the birds were singing. And, you know, it was like this is our spring thaw. But we're only in the beginning stages of winter. So, um, it's very detrimental if you go ahead and plant your crops now, set them outside, and then you get a thawing week. And um, so now with our climate changing, we're gonna be doing a little uh, different things with the winter sowing. And I started really doing it last year. For in my area, I'm in zone 5B. So zone 5B here in central Michigan. And what I have found I have to do for my winter sowing is more spring sowing anymore because of our roller coaster temperatures. So I generally wait until March, maybe April, depending on how roller coaster our uh, temperatures are before I start planting my crops in those jugs. And some people might say, well, why don't you just start them inside? 
I live in a small house. <laughs> it's less than uh, 900 square feet. I think we figured out it's actually less than 800 square feet. And uh, we manage it very well. Uh, we live in a very tight space very well. That being said, there's no place to put up a seed starting station. And like I stated earlier in the video, generally jugs that are winter sown, the plants in them do much better than the ones that are grown indoors. If you think about it, the seeds in the jugs are outside where they're um, getting used to constant temperature fluctuations, light fluctuations, wind and things like that. Where inside it's a very controlled environment. You're basically babying the seedlings indoors and so when they come out here they're not ready for the environment as natural as it is. So in the jugs they're much more acclimated to the outdoor environment already which makes them hardier. So what am I going to do this year? I'm going to start my seeds later in the jugs later because of the roller coaster um, weather that we have. Um, it'll still be in the winter so to speak here because the spring isn't until I think April 21st is <laughs> the first day of spring. So technically, even if I get them out late March, early April, it's still technically winter sowing. But that way I have my jugs out. I know that if uh, the weather starts to warm up, it's not gonna drop back down and up and back down and up and back down over the course of months. It will only be like a week or so, and it's much easier to protect seedlings that have germinated maybe a week, maybe a two weeks early and had a some temperature dip instead of something that has sprouted two months too early and then gets killed off because it has to wait two more months before it's growing season time. So that's one of the changes I'm gonna be doing here in my zone, again, zone 5B, is I'm gonna wait till later. And also, some crops I'm going to have to start differently. Again, when winter sowing was first created years ago, um, we had a steady climate. Our winters were cold and then our summers got warm and they got warm steadily and stayed warm steadily and, st and stably and got pretty warm as well. Um, I remember here uh, we would have summer temperatures of around 100 degrees for at least a month towards the end of summer. Um, you know we we're generally 85, 90 degrees most of our summer season and now we are lucky uh, for lack of a better word if we get into 90 or above 90 here in Michigan. Lately our summers have been very cool and have been very short considering what we are used to. So with that being said, your warm loving crops like tomatoes and peppers, especially hot peppers, those are tropical plants by definition. They like hot and they like wet environments. Now I'm not talking sopping wet, but they are used to hot and wet environments where uh, they get the, the water that they need, they get the heat that they need to make the fruits that we enjoy. Winter sowing right now, the way that I've currently been doing it, which is putting the seeds in the jugs in the winter and waiting for the temperatures to warm up to get them going, it's not working anymore because our temperatures don't get warm enough or soon enough for the tomatoes and the peppers, especially hot peppers, to actually germinate in time and grow a good size in time to transplant in time to get fruit in time. Uh, last year, if you have been following me along and you saw uh, my garden last year, I had tomato plants that I had winter sown and I planted them in late July. Not kidding, late July is when they finally got into the ground here. I didn't get any fruit until almost the frost in November and by then it was too late. So you can see what I mean that uh, everything was too late 
there wasn't enough time for those tomatoes to grow. Now I had somebody that I, I got some peppers from and I put my peppers in the greenhouse and again if you watched me for a while you saw those in my videos last year. Um, the peppers did great in the greenhouse because it was hot in the greenhouse even though my greenhouse isn't heated. I have a very crappy <laughs> Harbor Freight greenhouse and I really wish I would have gotten the bigger model. Um, I have, I think it's a six by eight. It's very small. Uh, it works for just starting out, so to speak, but there's no way to have heat in it unless you run like a ceramic heater or something small like that in there all the time. There's no space to put like thermal heat uh, in there with uh, big gallons of water or things like that. So it's not heated. It loses heat very easily. So trying to start season, that is a no-go. But in the summer, it works very well as a hot house because it does get hot in there. So that's where I put my peppers every year, is I put them in the greenhouse in pots, and they do very well because of the heat in there. So with that being said, what I'm going to change with the winter sowing aspect of my tomatoes and peppers this year is I'm going to do a double jug type system, a double greenhouse type system. Now generally this has been frowned upon. We don't uh, recommend doing it this way because it can overheat your seedlings. It can get them to germinate too fast. There's a lot of risk factors involved with doing a double greenhouse effect for your seedlings. But this is what I'm going to be trying this year uh, because I have to get tomatoes and peppers out and you know I don't have the space indoors to start them and I'm not going to go to the stores and buy seedlings that I don't know where they came from, what they've been sprayed with and they taste like crap because they are so hybridized that they've lost the flavor in lieu of better resilience to pests and whatever, you know. I'm going to start my own seedlings, it's a lot cheaper, but I'm going to be doing it a little bit riskier. And so I want to share that with you in case you want to try it that way. You don't have to by any means. But basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my jugs, I'm going to sow them like I usually do, plant the uh, seeds into the dirt, into the jugs. But for my tomatoes and my peppers, I'm actually going to set the jugs in the greenhouse. And uh, I'll have to monitor them and make sure that uh, they're getting water and stuff when it's time for them to start needing water and things. Because they're not going to be out in the elements, so to speak, where they get the snow and the rain coming in. So I'm going to have to do that. Uh, but they're going to be in the greenhouse where it's going to be at least 5 degrees warmer than outside. And when it really starts warming up, when the sun really starts beating on the greenhouse, I think it's going to be just warm enough where that soil is going to be warm enough soon enough where those plants will start to germinate. And when those plants start to germinate, when they start to grow, depending on the temperatures, I'm going to bring them back out here um, in the uh, environment because they should be fine as long as the aerial temperatures don't drop below 40 degrees. So as long as the aerial temperatures outside don't drop below 40 degrees, the temperatures, the uh, tomatoes and peppers should be okay. I can cover them anyways, but I will bring them back out here so they can grow out here. I just want to get them started in the greenhouse because they need really hot temperatures to germinate and start growing. So we're going to see how that goes. I'm probably going to do two groups. I'm probably going to do one where I leave them in the greenhouse longer and then a group that I actually bring out here just so I can compare how they are doing in terms of growing and things like that. And I will bring you guys along. You know, this is going to be an experiment that I want to share with you guys. And, uh, you know, if we're here for a couple more years, <laughs> the way the world's going, um, you'll be able to put those uh, practices in place for your own garden. So those are the changes that I'm going to be making in order to negotiate these climate changes here in my area. 
and uh, I hope that you will kind of think about winter sowing a little bit. It's a great concept if you haven't already started doing it. And if you can apply it to your seed starting, um, I guarantee you're gonna love it and the output that you get from it. I start just about everything that I grow in this garden in those milk and water jugs every year. And uh, you know, I have to tweak my system a little bit. Um, you know, sometimes you have to do that. You have to find what works and what's not working and figure out why it's not working and tweak the system to get it to work. I hope you found this video informative. I'm hoping to share more winter sowing tips and tricks as we go through this winter season and think about planting the garden. Um, my garden's still <laughs> being tilled out there. Um, you know, it's not ready yet because this garden is going on its rest this year. Uh, we're not planting anything in this garden. It's gonna have a whole year to just rest. And so I have a new garden space. If you guys are brand new with me on this channel, I have a brand new garden space. The ground was broken last year, at least a little bit, um, but it was too wet. And so uh, the tractor got stuck. So we have to wait until a little bit later on. And then hopefully the rest of the garden ground can get broke and we can get it tilled more, get it fenced. And then we can start planning on where what is going in that brand new garden space. So if you haven't already, make sure you click the subscribe button down below so you can follow me along on this journey and see how the new garden space turns out this year. I'm really excited to share that with you. Again, if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and let other people know. Thank you so much for being with me today. And I hope that wherever you are, you're wonderfully blessed. So stay warm and take care, everybody. Bye-bye.